Hebro asks, will you ever review the 25, 25th anniversary shows, and if so, will you do the vehicles as well? I don't have any plans to, uh, but mainly, again, it's because I don't intend for my collection to grow to encompass those. Uh, every once in a while I may get one and I may review one uh, for a special occasion, but that's all it would be is a special occasion. I'm really trying to stay focused on the vintage uh, line, so I don't have any plans to do that right now. Uh, Kevin uh, Mail uh, asks, will you be at JoeCon 2017? Well, the plan is at this time to be at JoeCon 2017. So, uh, yeah, I plan to be there, barring anything happening that would keep me from going. But, yeah, I expect to be there. Next question by uh, Tyrell White. Out of all the sub-teams of the G.I. Joe line, what is your favorite figure from each team? Well, that is a huge question. There were a lot of sub-teams. So um, I wrote down my answers the best I could think of them. Uh, so uh, Dreadnoughts, that would be Buzzer, uh, Slaughter's Renegades, uh, Mercer, I guess, uh, Cobra Law, I guess, Nemesis Enforcer, although I don't really like any of them from Cobra Law, but I guess he's the least bad one. Um, Battle Force 2000, I kind of like the look of Blocker. Uh, Iron Grenadiers, I like the basic Iron, Iron Grenadier Soldier. Uh, Tiger Force, I like Duke. Um, Python Patrol, I like the Viper. Night Force, I like Outback. Uh, Slaughter's Marauders, I like Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, Sky Patrol, I guess Altitude if I have to pick one. Uh, Eco Warriors, I guess Cesspool if I have to pick one. Uh, DEF, um, I like Bulletproof. Ninja Force, uh, Nunchuck. Air Commandos, Spirit. Does that count as a sub team? I don't know. Uh, Battle Corps, uh, I'm not sure that counts as a sub team, but if it does, I kind of like the Roadblock. Um, Dino Hunters, oh man, I don't want to count Dino Hunters. Ambush, I guess, from Dino Hunters. Mega Marines, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't find any from Mega Marines that I, that I really liked. Same with Star Brigade, with Aliens, I'm not a big fan of Star Brigade. Shadow Ninjas, I, I'm sorry, I can't pick one from Shadow Ninjas. I just think they're all terrible. I'm sorry. David Sharp asks, will you continue to review the Marvel comic book series? Uh, I would like to, but I don't know when I will find the time to do it. And looking at the schedule for 2017, it doesn't look like I will be able to get to it uh, in next year. So I really want to. I enjoyed that, but I just don't know when I will do it. Uh, Bubble Wrapped Memories says, do you have a dedicated G.I. Joe room in your house? If so, I'm jealous. I don't. Um, this is not in its own room. I wish it was. Uh, maybe someday, but not yet. Michael Johnson, uh, Scotch or Bourbon, and which brand? Um, I like Scotch, um, and I like uh, Glenlivet, um, but it's a little bit expensive, so I don't get it very often. So I've been known to drink uh, Bourbon every once in a while. James Berry Jr., what is your fondest memory uh, play with your Joes, and who was it with? Um, I can't narrow down a specific memory, but uh, we had a neighborhood friend named Sam. Uh, he lived just, you know, just down the street from us, my brother and me. And we would always go over to his house or he would come over to our house. And we just, between all of us, all three of us, we had almost everything uh, in the G.I. Joe line. So, man, we really created some huge battles um, and it was a lot of fun. So I'd say playing with Sam... Uh, was uh, the most fun that I had playing a uh, G.I. Joe as a kid. Um, Chris uh, Mihalik uh, asks, Brian, what is the one figure, vehicle, or playset uh, you don't own yet that you hope to get in 2017? Man, there that's a long list. Um, but I guess at the top of that list, um, if I can narrow it down, I'd like to get a complete and intact bridge layer uh, and or a complete... Mauler MBT. Uh, those have been challenges and I kind of, uh, you know, hope to uh, get one or both of those this year. Not sure, but I'm going to try. We'll see how it goes. Uh, GX Bouncer. Uh, will there be more joint videos like with FormBX257, uh, Cobra Convergence? I hope so. Uh, and, I, you know, I've got some ideas and I want to ask, you know, guys if they want to collaborate with me. I really hope they do because that was a lot of fun. Uh, Kyle Allen uh, asks, do you actually play with the toys? If so, how? Uh, big battles, stories, etc. I don't really. Um, you know, I did those action scenes, you know, a while back, and those were fun for a while, uh, but I just I had a hard time, you know, 
setting aside the time to do those. That was about as close as I could get to playing with the toys. Um, so, eh, not really. I mainly display them and I um, have them for review purposes. And so, yeah, that's about it. Um, Shannon Fargo says, uh, what were, was there a toy slash figure from your childhood that you thought was the best, but as an adult collector uh, makes you think the opposite now? Well, that's a tough question because mostly my opinion goes the other direction. I was a lot more lenient, uh, or I, I was a lot um, harsher on toys back when I was a kid than I am now. Um, when I was a kid, man, that non-military stuff, I just hated it so much. If it had bright colors on it, it was just, it was like toxic. I, I couldn't stand it. Um, now, I've mellowed out quite a bit now. I can tolerate a lot of that stuff more now. Uh, and so um, there are a lot more things as an adult collector that I appreciate that I did not appreciate as a kid. But if there had to be one that I thought was kind of cool, when I was a kid, but I don't like as much now, and that might be maybe the Silver Mirage. I do remember kind of liking it back then, but now when I have it and I'm, you know, uh, uh, I'm handling it, it seems just really fragile and flimsy, and I'm a lot less impressed with it now than I was back then. Uh, next question uh, by Max Blue says, do you like the Joe Cobra sub-teams? Which is the best and which one is the worst in your opinion? Uh, Joe, a toy and Joe lore-wise. Okay. Um, I do like some of the sub-teams. My favorite would be the Dreadnoughts. Um, the worst is, it's hard to pick between Star Brigade or Mega Marines. Uh, both of those are, man, they're pretty painful to look at. Um, Stay Dread asks, what do you think are your main strengths as a G.I. Joe reviewer? Um, in parentheses, he says, I've got answers to this, but curious to hear your thoughts. Man, that's a tough question. My strength as a G.I. Joe reviewer? Um, I think I'm a decent editor. Um, I, 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 I try to keep improving. I try to um, you know, avoid mistakes as much as I can. Um, I, you know, I try to, you know, bring other reviewers in and kind of build the community in my, in some small way. But, uh, man, I, mostly when I look at my reviews, I mainly see the flaws. I'm mainly looking for the flaws because I want to see what I can do to improve. So it's hard for me to point at strengths. Sonic360 asks, what's your take on the upcoming Hasbro shared universe? Do you think it's a good idea for such diverse Hasbro franchises to share a universe like Marvel does? Well, uh, it's not my thing. Uh, I know that other people like it, and if you like it, great. I'm glad that there is something that you like. Uh, I don't think it works particularly well. I mean, these uh, separate toy lines were created with their own separate universes. They're not really compatible. Uh, they don't really need each other, uh, and for me, it just it just doesn't work. I don't really have any interest in it. Maybe it'll take off, uh, but I just uh, it doesn't do anything for me. Um, Soterian Coil says, "What is your favorite season, e.g., e, uh, e.g., series slash year, and who is your favorite female Joe and uh, female Cobra? Uh, tell us without the miss when the missus isn't watching. Well, she's not watching right now." So, um, uh, favorite, uh, like favorite uh, year of the toy line, I think is 1984. Um, and favorite female Joe uh, is probably Scarlet, even though I really would have liked to get a better version of Scarlet in the vintage line. Uh, favorite female Cobra is probably the Baroness. I know that's a, such a cliche, Scarlet and the Baroness. But, I mean, there weren't all that many female uh, figures, so there's not a lot to choose from. Uh, and those are the ones that had m the most impact on me and the ones that I liked the most. Uh, Jose Elgato de Schrodinger uh, Sanchez. Uh, Schrodinger's cat, that's clever. Uh, he says, HCC788, I have two questions. One, why do you believe Cobra have so many YouTubers that are fans and people that love them if they are presented as a terrorist organization? And two, do you believe Cobra is really a terrorist organization like Al-Qaeda? Uh, well, um, the answer to the second question first. Um, I know that in the cartoon series, they calls Cobra a terrorist organization, but it's not, when you look at it, it's not really set up like an Al-Qaeda-like terrorist organization. Uh, 
It's more like a, a fascist movement, which doesn't make it any better. I mean, it may be worse. It's, uh, it's still really bad. So the first question is really interesting. Then why do people like it so much? Why are people wearing the t-shirts with the logo on it for this uh, fictitious fascist organization? Well, um, I would say uh, that you shouldn't read too much into that. Uh, it's more along the lines of um, a good uh, team of heroes also needs an adequate villain, a villain that is worthy of you know all of their effort to fight them. Uh, and so it's kind of the same thing as liking Darth Vader um, in Star Wars. It's not that you love evil, it's that you appreciate a good villain. And Cobra is a worthy villain for G.I. Joe. So I, when people are, you know, like Cobra characters, wear Cobra, you know, costumes and things like that, I don't think they're endorsing uh, terrorism or fascism. I think they're just appreciating a good villain uh, for G.I. Joe. Ben Kurth asks, uh, top five or top ten Joes slash Cobra or Joe slash Cobra vehicles. Also, might be interested to have a community vote for all time top five or top ten Joes. And uh, the Railway Experience asks a similar question, so I put this together. The way Railway Experience asks, uh, what are your top ten favorite G.I. Joe figures? Uh, if you could have only ten Joes and ten Cobras in your collection, what would they be? Um, and would you ever review a Leonard Core figure? Well, answering uh, the last part first, um, I don't have any plans to review Leonard Core, but I would be interested in do it, doing it sometime, maybe just for comparison purposes. Uh, so I'll think about that. But as far as my top 10, as I did a video for top 10 vehicles a year ago, and I was thinking about it and about whether my top 10 would change. And at least for now, I think I'm going to keep it as it is. There are some vehicles that uh, are getting really close to the top 10 because I really like them, but I think I'm going to keep it the same for now. Uh, my top 10 vehicles were the Cobra Moray, the Dragonfly, the uh, Headquarters Command Center, the Tomahawk, the Stinger, the Vamp, the Sky Striker, the His Tank, the USS Flag, and the Killer Whale. Um, and there are some other really great vehicles, and I really like them, but I just have a hard time knocking any of those 10 off of the list because I like them so much. As far as uh, top 10 Joes, um, well, okay, if I could choose 10, uh, it's hard to, for me to put these in any order. Um, well, actually, I'm going to answer this question as, like, um, if I could only have 10 Joes and only have 10 Cobras, what would they be? Because that's a slightly different approach. Um, my 10 Joes uh, would be uh, Stalker version 1.5, uh, Snake Eyes version 1.5, Scarlet version 1. I just like. I think I like the straight arm version better than the swivel arm version on Scarlet. Um, Duke version 1, Gung Ho version 1, Leatherneck version 1, Roadblock version 1, Breaker version 1 because he's my first figure, uh, Rock and Roll version 2 because he was my last figure, and uh, I guess Sergeant Slaughter version 1. Um, I've really grown to appreciate Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, even more than I did as a kid. I really like Sergeant Slaughter. I'd like to have him in the 10. As far as 10 Cobras, I'd like to have, uh, I'd bring with me uh, Cobra Commander version 1.5, uh, also the Hooded Cobra Commander, you know, because, you know, uh, also Storm Shadow version 1, uh, Cobra Soldier version 1.5, uh, Cobra Officer version 1.5, might as well have both of them. A Viper version 1, a Crimson Guard version 1, really like the Crimson Guard, Destro version 1, um, the Baroness, and Major Blood version 1. I, those are the ones that I would really have a hard time living without. Uh, Michael Pytel says, uh, hello HCC788, great, uh, great channel, thank you. Uh, is your collection of figures complete? Uh, do you have all the figures slash characters you want to have, or is it never ending? Uh, I, it is not complete. Um, I would estimate that it's about a third of the way complete, um, but it's not never ending. I do have a, an end point that I'm trying to reach, in which, uh, when I reach that point, I will stop. Uh, Jamie Marie Blanchard asks, uh, the toolbox video uh, recently begs the following question, do you have any plans to revisit customizing figures? Uh, it seems like it would be incredibly fun. It probably would be incredibly fun. I don't have plans to do that right now. Again, just because of time, um, I don't 
I uh, think that I would have the time to develop that skill and really do it well. So I don't plan to do that right now. If I ever do though, I've got some parts to get started. Uh, next question, uh, Matt Lurch, uh, a number of questions. Uh, one, what is the one figure vehicle and playset you would keep if you needed to sell your collection? Uh, and two, uh, how do you, uh, did you convince Mrs. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 to help you with your reviews at times? Well, uh, one figure vehicle and playset. Uh, I would want to have my Breaker version one, uh, just because that was my first figure. Uh, vehicle, um, that is harder. Maybe the Vamp. Uh, no, 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 the Hiss Tank. I would, I would want to keep a Hiss Tank. Uh, and playset, um, if I could only have one, you know, the, the USS Flag takes up a lot of space, so I'd probably choose the Headquarters Command Center, um, just because it's more compact and it'd be easier to keep. Um, so how did I convince Mrs. HCC788 to help? I just asked. Uh, the first time, I think, was in the review for uh, Low Light. Um, and then after that, you know, I just come in and say, hey, would you do this thing for me? And she'd say, okay, so we did the thing. And, you know, it, it uh, progressed and we had more and more fun. So uh, she seems to enjoy it, so we'll try to keep doing that. Um, uh, L-O-1-B-O-2, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, asks, as a kid, was there a friend who had a ton more G.I. Joe toys than you? If so, were you jealous or happy to be able to play with them sometimes? Like I said, we had a friend, Sam, from the neighborhood, and he had all the big stuff. I mean, he had the USS Flag and the Terradrome, uh, and my brother and I had a lot of the smaller and the medium-sized stuff. Uh, but we weren't really jealous because, man, we were over at his house all the time. He was over at our house all the time. Uh, we played with all of it together um, as if we all just owned all of it. So uh, it was kind of like having a USS flag and a Terradrome. It was kind of like uh, as if I had it because I got to play with it every day. So I just really appreciated that. Um, I wish I could find Sam again. I haven't had contact with him for decades and I have no idea where he is. Uh, Tony Williams uh, says, first of all, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you very much. I think uh, I speak for all of us when I say uh, it doesn't go unnoticed or unappreciated. Thank you very much. Secondly, Merry Christmas to you and your family. Late Merry Christmas to you. <clears throat> My question is, top to bottom, what do you think is the best year uh, for the Joe toy line 82 to 94? <clears throat> um, also, similar question, Jason Galleon uh, says, better year, 84 or 85? And uh, S. Dowling3516 uh, asks a similar question. What is your favorite year for G.I. Joe? Uh, is it different for vehicles and figures? Uh, for example, I think 84 is the best year uh, figures and 85 for vehicles. Overall, I think 85 is the strongest year, but from 83 to 86 was an amazing run of hits. Uh, thanks for all, uh, thanks for the great work uh, you do. Thank you very much. Um, and so basically answering all of those questions, I think my favorite year is 1984. Uh, but 1985 is really close second. Man, 85 was a great year. Uh, but I, I like some of the characters that were introduced in 84 uh, just slightly more. Um, and the, as far as vehicles go, you had the killer whale in 84, and it's hard to top that. So 84 is going to be my top year, but, um, but 85 is, was also really good. And it's a very close uh, second place. Uh, so close that it's, it's hard to choose between the two, but if I have to choose one, I think the answer is 1984. Uh, Cyber Tiger Retro Toy Showcase and Reviews, who has a channel on YouTube which you should check out. He says, what are your thoughts on the current state of the G.I. Joe live action movies? Do you feel Joe fans have been sidelined in favor of Transformers movies? What sort of movie would you like to see if we are lucky enough to get another? Thank you. Uh, okay, I do think uh, that the Joe movies are being sidelined a bit for Transformers movies. I think that's to be expected. Uh, the Transformers franchise at the moment is more popular uh, and is making more money. Um, so you got to kind of expect that kind of thing. Um, but uh, what I would like to see, man, I would like for, I'd like for them to start over. Uh, now, I, G.I. Joe Retaliation, I thought, was, was okay. It wasn't bad. But... Um, you started out, I think, on the wrong foot with Rise of Cobra. 
um, you didn't um, you missed out on a lot of the development of G.I. Joe that you got especially in the comic book series and so I'd like them to just start over scrap all of it start fresh but start on a smaller scale so we can get to know the characters a little bit better so you'd have more time for storytelling and more time for character development so I would say uh, start out with the G.I. Joe roster being about the same size as it was in 1983 or 1984 kind of at the beginning of the team so that we get to know the team, the team members, and then as you have sequels, we grow with the team. We get to know the new characters as they're introduced. So, I would I would try to simplify it a little bit, get back to basics. Uh, okay, uh, Tonka Tony says I've asked my dad, who's a big fan of your videos. Thanks, Dad. Uh, this uh, and I would like to ask you as well. When G.I. Joe was dying out in the late 80s, what do you think could have saved the G.I. Joe line? And if you worked for Hasbro in the late 80s, what would you have done differently to save it? Or do you think it was inevitable it was going to die anyway? Anyways, uh, I'm thinking about the A.R.A.H. line, uh, not the Goofy D line. <laughs> okay, and uh, by Goofy, I mean the bright neon colors. Sometimes um, I have to wear dark sunglasses just to look at their bright green and blue weapons. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, anyways, my dad thinks it was going to die out due to other cartoons coming out, TMNT and Marvel series, Spider-Man, X-Men, what do you think? Um, I think your dad's probably right. Um, I'm not sure anything could have saved G.I. Joe and kept it going for the long term just because trends had changed and G.I. Joe tried to change to keep up with the trends, but the thing is, it, it's you, you can't out... Ninja Turtle, the Ninja Turtles. You know, you can't out Power Rangers, the Power Rangers. Um, so it just, I mean, I feel like if they had just um, let the line um, end maybe a little bit sooner, you know, preserve the, the um, you know, the success of the brand, you go out on top rather than just out of desperation keep trying to copy other toy lines. Um, they would have been in a position um, in the longer term to bring G.I. Joe back uh, when the time was right. Um, and in the mid-90s, I just don't think the time was right. Um, Jordell 2010, uh, in a hypothetical scenario where no live-action film adaptations of G.I. Joe were made and you were commissioned uh, with writing a pitch for the potential G.I. Joe flick, um, how would you approach it? Uh, who would you prefer to direct the film? Uh, which actor would you cast as Cobra Commander? Well, uh, I don't know the, who should direct it, and I'm not sure who should be Cobra Commander. Cobra Commander is behind a mask, so it's um, the actor is somewhat important, but the voice for Cobra Commander is more important. Um, but um, how would I pitch a G.I. Joe movie? Now, eventually, I would like for there to be a new G.I. Joe that is geared solely toward the next generation and that does not copy our old 80s G.I. Joe. But I understand that if they're going to do a movie, they're going to try to capitalize on nostalgia. So it's going to be Real American Hero. That's just uh, how it's going to be. So if they're going to do a movie of Real American Hero, I, I want them to start at the beginning, start at the basics. It's not a huge team yet. It's, they don't have, the pit is a secret underground base, but it's not this giant underground city. Um, you know, make it believable, make it relatable. Um, it, it, I know it's hard to imagine a, like a, a movie that isn't on the largest scale possible, but I would like to see a G.I. Joe movie that is scaled down just a little bit so we can get to know the characters more and develop the characters as we got to in the comic book series. So that would be what I would like for them to do. <clears throat> Hector Canales uh, says, uh, does your family have a problem with you collecting? Do you collect any other figures? I'm being a, uh, I being a husband and father as well, don't collect with uh, anyone really because as far as I know, I'm doing, gr uh, I'm doing grown man whose house looks like uh, 80s uh, Toys R Us. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, as far as I know, they don't have any problem with it. I try to keep it uh, within reason. 
Um, so if they've had a problem with it, they haven't told me so. Um, but um, I do understand not wanting your collection to explode into something that's unmanageable and takes over your life. And so that's something to always keep in mind. You know, real life is always more important than uh, collecting plastic toys. Um, but, uh, you know, I just try to keep it reasonable. Tony Jackson uh, says, uh, which uh, ARAH character should have gotten a version 2? Uh, there's uh, more than a few top tier and lower tier characters who got um, second and even third figures, while Lady J, Alpine, Tunnel Rat never got a second chance at greatness, or um, as a second part of the question, uh, were the original figures perfect and uh, didn't need an update like Leathernet, um, uh, Leathernet Lowlight, or, or Mohawk Zartan? Mohawk Zartan, that's funny. Okay, um, I think that um, as far as um, characters that should have gotten a second version, uh, I think the Baroness should have gotten a second version. I mean, that's one of the most important characters in the line, and there was only one version in the vintage line. I mean, Scarlet got a second version. The second version wasn't great, but at least she got a second version. The Baroness didn't even get that. So that would be my pick for one that should have got another version. Uh, Lee Gray says, when will you be reviewing Fast Draw? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm trying. Uh, also, uh, to make your reviewers even uh, reviews even better than they already are, uh, why don't get uh, why don't you get more full card backs and do comparisons uh, so it would be easier to see what certain items on the figure may be and see where the artwork differs from the figures, such as color differences and unpainted details. Uh, well, I, I'd like to, and I do when I can, uh, but uh, the scope of my collection when I first started it was, you know figure, accessories, and file card. I really wasn't looking for full back file cards. Now, I have quite a few now, and I'll be including those in the reviews, but um, it's just, again, one of those things where I'm trying to think about the scope of my collection, make sure it doesn't get out of control, and make sure that I stick with what I really want to get. So, uh, for me, complete means figure, accessory, and file card. But I will get full, full card backs as I'm able to. Uh, Woodman29 says, Hi HCC, uh, I've been here since the beginning and have enjoyed watching your channel grow. Thank you very much. Um, I'm an avid and longtime Joe collector. Uh, I've been uh, contemplating starting a channel of my own to review my collection. Uh, any advice you can offer? Uh, the uh, dedicated G.I. Joe community isn't that large, and I would like to do a cooperative video with you sometime. Keep up the great work. Well, cool. Um, I think it's a great idea. You know, the more the merrier. Um, I think the more people are, who are doing this kind of thing kind of generates interest, and that helps all of us. So uh, I think it's a cool idea. Um, so my advice, um, you know, one thing that I will would like to do soon is do like, a how-to video on how I do this process of putting together my videos and so I think I'll save my advice for something like that uh, but uh, just generally you know go for it um, it takes some time to develop you know your skill and your to get your own voice but it's fun uh, and so if you want to do that you should probably give it a try um, and if you end up doing that, uh, then and you want to do some kind of a cooperative thing, you know, we can talk about that and see what we can do. Um, I just have to make sure I have time and make sure that it fits with what I'm trying to do. But I, I really enjoy doing the collaborations. Uh, I'd be happy to do more of them. They are really time consuming, so I kind of have to limit what I do just for, just for time sake. But um, you know, I. Good luck, uh, and send me, you know, your channel uh, information if you start doing it, so I can check out and see what you got. Uh, Bart D Man 95 Lobby Works uh, has four questions. Four. Okay. Uh, he says one. Uh, what is slash are your opinions and thoughts on GI Joe action figures and vehicles that came out in the year 2001? Personally, I love that year because um, Joes were back in the stores in my area, and I bought almost all of them. Uh, the answer to that is I don't really know. Uh, it's not within the scope of my collection, so I don't really know enough uh, to really tell you what I think about it. I know I've seen some stuff from that era, and some of it looks really cool. I just don't really have any of it, so I can't really tell you a whole lot about it. Two, 
Can you give a quick tip on determining if a G.I. Joe gun or backpack is legit and not a bootleg? Well, one, sometimes people do the float test, um, like uh, vintage, uh, real vintage accessories will float and some repros will not. That is not a surefire test though. Some repro uh, accessories will float. Um, so, uh, that, I mean, but that's a, like a preliminary test that you can try uh, just to identify if you have a repro versus uh, a, a legitimate vintage accessory. Um, uh, third question, uh, can you ask uh, me a question for my Q&A video? He he he. Uh, okay, I didn't know you were doing a Q&A video. Uh, so um, my question would be, um, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? Uh, four, could you please yell, yo Joe? Yo Joe!